for this session, we'll be taking a closer look at enterprise services sector in India. Ooh. For this panel, we have with us Dave Kare from Lightspeed Venture Partners, who will moderate this session for us. And joining him, we have Raghu Ravinatala, founder and CEO of Yellow.ai, Sri Krishnan Ganeshan, founder of Rocket Lane, and Rishi Kulkarni, CEO Rev.so. Over to you, Dev. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Dave Kare. I'm with Lightspeed Venture Partners, an early stage venture capital fund. I'm really excited to have uh, three fantastic founders here who are building uh, SaaS companies from India for the world. Um, and uh, to, we'll talk over the next half an hour about what their businesses are doing, how they built their businesses, and sort of what sorts of constituencies and customers they are um, targeting in the US so that you in the audience who are in the US thinking about how to partner with Indian companies um, will have a better idea of what they do and can reach out to them afterwards if you like. Uh, so with that, I will uh, hand it over just alphabetically to Raghu um, to talk about uh, Delft and Yellow.ai for, for a minute. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, absolutely great to be here. Um, I'm Raghu. I'm co-founder and uh, CEO for Yellow AI. Um, at Yellow AI, we enable enterprises to automate their uh, customer experience across sales, uh, marketing, and commerce um, on chat and voice on platforms such as uh, WhatsApp, telephony, uh, websites, mobile apps. Um, some of the leading uh, Fortune 500 companies uh, deploy us uh, to enhance their customer experience and drive efficiency, like Schlumberger, Roche Pharma, etc. Uh, great to be here and look forward to the discussion. Raghu, just one question for you. Anything you can tell us about the scale you've reached in terms of number of customers or geographies you you operate in? Yeah, uh, Yellow AI right now has 1,000 plus uh, customers uh, across the world. Uh, so we have, uh, we are born out of uh, Asia Pacific um, and now we have customers across uh, United States, Europe, uh, Latin America. Uh, and uh, we have our sales uh, and marketing teams uh, uh, across pretty much all the geographies, uh, uh, right from India, Singapore, Middle East, uh, to the US, uh, Europe, and Latin America. Got it. Thanks, Raghu. Uh, Rishi, over to you. Hi. Hi. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Dave. Thanks uh, for having uh, me on this uh, panel. Uh, I'm Rishi, Rishi Kulkarni. Uh, I'm the CEO, co-founder of Rev. Um, we uh, we uh, automate, uh, we put your back office on, on steroids, uh, be it uh, back office quotations, be it uh, proposals, be it contracts. Uh, we automate uh, all those processes which are driven from your CRM, driven from your ERP. Um, uh, we run a very inside sales product led uh, kind of model out of india uh, targeting primarily united states uh, our product led kind of uh, model has over 10000 users on our platform uh, on our sales assisted model which is largely upgrading the product led users uh, to a to a team or an organization wide kind of deployment has over 70 plus paid customers uh, we do have uh, signups and users coming from across the world but uh, yeah, our focus has largely been United States. Uh, the kind of customers we talk to are largely IT services, SaaS companies, uh, and financial services companies because they are largely uh, very much back office driven companies. Uh, we target uh, SMBs and mid markets, um, anywhere from 50 employees to up to 1,000 employees. That's primarily our target. Uh, uh, we run our operations out of India, uh, Bangalore. Uh, but um, uh, as, a, as Dave introduced, uh, we are a fairly internet-based global SaaS operating out of India. Thanks, Rishi. Shri? Hey, folks. Uh, I'm Shri, uh, founder and CEO of Rocket Lane. We build purpose-built collaboration, project collaboration software for client-facing projects. Um, the, the first sort of 
kind of projects we're going after are implementation and onboarding or you know vendor onboarding uh, sort of projects uh, think of it as anything that's repeatable and cross org that you want to keep on time hold people accountable on both sides that's the sort of project collaboration that we facilitate uh, it's like uh, taking project management plus document collaboration plus communication into one experience uh, and having a beautiful portal for the other side to like have that transparency and and engage with you effectively so we go after uh, customers globally who have like a three week or more uh, uh, timeline for for any, any of the repeatable you know processes that they're running with a multi org element to it uh, I, I think saas companies professional services teams and and you know any kind of uh, team that that wants to work with an external partner to hold each other accountable in a project uh, is sort of the company we're going after great thanks sri so with that uh, with those introductions i want to just dive into a few questions on overall the market uh, uh, of saas companies being built from india for the world for the us um would love to have any of you sort of talk a little bit about um the evolution of the saas ecosystem in india just briefly sort of where was it you know 5 years ago 10 years ago saas as a concept of course has been around for 15 20 years now globally where was the saas market in india 10 years ago where is it now uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about where it could go over the next uh, decade or so but open to anybody yeah, it feels like uh, you know uh, when you think about it 10 years ago there were probably uh, many more when you think about b2b and software it was all about services right uh, very few companies which were probably smaller uh, than you know many of the large saas companies today um, so some companies starting to break out right so there were many small companies in maybe uh, single digit million dollar revenues or double digit uh, million dollar revenues uh, which which were around uh, so we were starting to see some interest right it, it it we could see that it was interesting that companies were able to build software from here product from here and sell globally but it was nowhere close to the kind of scale we have today where there are uh, I, i think what like seven or eight uh, unicorns out there many more looking to break into that category as well and and you know so much attention to to saas overall uh, because i think there are a few companies that have shown that you know trajectory to success and that there is a path for you to establish yourself as a like big global saas company uh, doesn't have to be a you know small shop creating software which which took a small percentage of share but rather you can emerge as leaders as well yeah well congratulations uh, to rishi you and shri both of you you were at uh, your freshworks alumni and uh, freshworks of course went public famously uh, a couple of weeks ago a really seminal event for india i think just putting us on the map um if i recall correctly from their public filings they're at 350 400 million dollars per year run rate of revenue which is massive and also growing very very fast and now trading at i forget some number well north of 10 billion dollars um just sort of maybe any learnings um what is it about whether it's freshworks or more broadly saas companies from india that differentiates them against you know competitors in the us or elsewhere another way of asking this is what is the india advantage for saas companies from india for the world and rishi i know i cut you off apologies for well, maybe you are no no previous- no 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 worries at all i just uh, i know they uh, uh, very faintly i think we both of us remember meeting about 10 years or about 9 years ago back in bangalore and uh, we uh, i think the conversations like what is inside sales what is enterprise uh, what is sdr were still being formed in our country um, and i would i could count the number of uh, b2b companies targeting in us on on our fingers but today uh, as of i was reading a, a bain report there are 1200 plus funded companies in india uh, india saas 40 plus of them are at cvc plus uh, 8000 plus uh, saas startups operating of india the scale is just is just massive uh, uh, that's coming out of saas and i think the couple of uh, 
drivers for india i feel is uh, the the one that uh, for for many reasons uh, uh, is uh, what the tcs or the infosys or the it built over the last 25 30 years is a massive engineering talent uh, it it runs of uh, over half a million talent is there in the in the top two cities in back in india alone uh, and that's just engineering talent um uh, i was looking at a uh, very recent uh, linkedin count on the number of sales development reps that that are in india this particular position didn't even exist in india 5 years ago today there are 80000 uh, employees with sales development rep in india alone so that's the scale that we are operating at and i think uh, uh, the scale of engineering talent uh, we are very good at customer service again it comes from operating it bpo for for literally decades out of india and that seeped into the cultural system here and uh, i think uh, uh, great uh, management talent which who has who have been able to focus their expertise on product so i think uh, massive engineering talent uh, great customer service uh, and uh, uh, just uh, just the kind of focus uh, the skill that we put on product i think these are some of the three things that especially are needed for a saas kind of a build out that we do out of india and that's that's what i think uh, uh, i saw first hand in freshworks and i am now seeing in across companies and i think that's what is driving is uh, is driving the saas out of india got it if i go any feel like no, definitely um, i think uh, Uh, I think I well agree with all the points that uh, Rishi brought out. Uh, what we have seen from our viewpoint is also from a market perspective uh, how India Advantage can uh, drive global success. Uh, if you see India, I think it's a mobile first market, and um, and it's a it's a kind of leading force India and Asia Pacific in how uh, mobile adoption uh, by consumers and even the users within the enterprise. Uh, adopt uh, software uh, so uh, from our perspective we have seen that um, be it messaging uh, be it conversations uh, asia pack is kind of leading in terms of the scale uh, reach and also from a uh, enterprise need to have a uh, mobile first software to engage with their users and building for um, for for that specific market and at the scale that uh, uh, indian enterprises interact with their customers interact with their employees kind of evolving into building um, globally leading products for mobile first uh, as company right and that's a significant advantage that the market itself can uh, provide over top of the engineering and uh, gtm uh, talent the second aspect from a market perspective where we can leverage significantly uh, especially from a enterprise uh, customer perspective is that um, most of the enterprise software backend uh, be it sap's be it salesforce mm-hmm. is managed by si companies with employees based out of india be it accenture tcs and infosys and several such companies so um, software products uh, that kind of can leverage that ecosystem and uh, build a product plus a i play with uh, with these companies have a significant advantage uh, because you can build deeper relationship with the uh, si companies from uh, implementation and solutioning perspective that can deliver greater value to uh, uh, to end customer third uh, rishi mentioned about customer support uh, it's not just about uh, the saas companies providing customers better customer support india and apac are centers for customer support uh, for large global companies across the world and if companies can leverage those uh, uh, the domain knowledge that's kind of built in the geography and address markets where that domain knowledge can be uh, leveraged to serve enterprise customers for example customer service um, related uh, softwares they have a significant uh, uh, advantage out there a similar uh, example would be uh, what do you call this global capability centers uh, many of the world's leading uh, fortune 500 fortune 2000 companies have large application um, builders and application support personnel based out of india as a part of global capability centers and more and more they are making decisions on 
software that is used by them. For example, RPA companies have $50 million plus ARR revenues just out of the global capability centers based out of India. So companies addressing those markets again have a, a leverage where they can get global customers, get global skill deployment, but, but with Salesforce based out of India. So I see these opportunities uh, apart from what Rishi mentioned, uh, uh, which are more democratically applicable for all SaaS. Thank you, Raghu. Shri, sorry, you got uh, you were saying something. Sorry. Yeah, I, I was just going to add that uh, I think from a when you look at the product muscle and you know engineering muscle, I think there is a generation of engineers and product and design that's now seen uh, you know uh, an experience building SaaS products at companies like Freshworks, Zoho. Uh, and many other like uh, good companies that have emerged over the years, right? So I think in that sense, uh, we don't have, uh, I mean, we, we have a huge engineering talent already and mixed with that people who have actually been through that journey already of scaling B2B SaaS and, and building product which needs to work for a global audience. I think we're, we're sort of uh, have an advantage now of being able to build more product per dollar raised so in that sense, I think wherever there is like large categories where, uh, you know, uh, even established solutions exist, our ability to move fast, uh, build out like uh, comprehensive, robust solutions has, has really increased over the years. And yeah. it feels like how customer adoption happens. Also, the, you know, there's there's been a level playing field now, thanks to the likes of, say, a G2 or Captera, people are looking at reviews and buying software, not necessarily being sold by people, right? So in that sense, if you have a great product, I think uh, who you purchase from, uh, you know, for, for, for the buyer, whether they're in the US or anywhere else globally, they're going to look at those reviews and decide what's a good product. So in that way, I think we have a, a level playing field. Now you add on top of that, the fact that we can also serve SMB customers uh, with you know, uh, with better customer service at scale, uh, that that's a great advantage. So if you're comparing products, we have products that are innovative and, and you know, ahead, but also like we, we are equal, uh, nothing, you know, below global standards. Add to it that service element where we can assist customers to buy, even if they're like paying us $300 a month. That's something that, that I think helps us with. No, thank you very much. That's a... A lot of interesting comments on that I think the audience will find net new. The audience being government organizations in the U.S. and other trade bodies and and large companies in the U.S. looking to do business uh, with India uh, and Indian companies. Um, I want to just call out a couple of stats from these uh, the McKinsey SaaS Boomi report that was put out a, a month or two ago, and then the Bain report put out I think six months or nine months ago. I think if you put the two together. There's a view that in SaaS companies originating in India can account to for five to seven to eight percent of global SaaS revenue over the next decade, which is uh, you know a trillion dollar market cap opportunity. There's a very large opportunity for India, not just for value creation but also job creation and also just innovation, putting India on the map globally. So that's uh, that's very exciting. Would recommend anybody in the audience to go. Google those two reports and download them and, and close up. Um, I want to just get into a little bit of detail on the types of SaaS companies coming out of India, just to sort of break it down a little bit. Um, and the reports have talked about, you know, companies that are at the infrastructure layer all the way to workflow automation and then sort of different sort of verticals. Would any of you sort of want to just chat a little bit about how you see the segmentation? of SaaS companies in India? What are the different types that, again, the audience can go engage with um, later? Yeah, I think uh, vertical SaaS is something that's definitely, uh, you know, uh, taking off from, from India, right? We see a lot of good companies uh, targeting, you know, building purpose-built software for specific verticals. We've seen, you know, the likes of, say, uh, you know, there's, there's, CareStack, Innovator, Locus, there's Vimo on the financial services side, uh, you know, View.ai in, in like fashion retail. There's, there's like lots of uh, companies building out for specific verticals. And, and I think that's a very clear trend that, you know, you, you focus on a vertical, build 
you know, specific uh, features, capabilities that are going to help you unlock ROI for that vertical. You keep building on top of that. Uh, the, clearly, like a, a, a path to create a big company focusing on some of the large verticals. That's that's a definite uh, yeah. way to segment a uh, lot of the new companies coming out. There's also this category uh, of developer tools that we're seeing coming yeah, out of yeah, India. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if any of you want to comment on that. I, th I, I think the uh, I think while mine is more of a where Rev is more of a horizontal business, uh, which has been largely uh, where uh, it's a it's a evergreen segment. Uh, Freshworks O has been there and. Uh, workflows and business will forever be there in that way. But uh, horizontal infrastructure, uh, uh, be it browser stack, uh, be it Postman, uh, uh, Druva, I think those are very, very interesting mission critical kind of an infra uh, category that's coming out of India. Uh, and that's very, very interesting because uh, as I said, uh, and both uh, Raghu and Sri mentioned uh, that uh, the kind of a product experience that we have had coming out of, uh, say, B2B or enterprise, uh, that's definitely helping us address the horizontal business solutions. But, uh, we, but as the engineering talent is getting bolder in solving infrastructure problems and they're getting entrepreneurial, and that is where I think this entire category coming out of India, which is infrastructure uh, applications, which I think is a much, much bigger, bigger space when you see the three big uh, infrastructure players like AWS, Azure, uh, or even Google Cloud. And uh, I, I'm, uh, I, uh, so I think that's a category which is very exciting that's, uh, that's coming out of India because just the kind of depth of expertise that's needed to operate that kind of uh, uh, segment. And that's, that's something yeah. very exciting. There. I just add I think it really helps there. that. Sorry, Shri, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, uh, I think it really helps that we've had quite a few breakthrough companies like on the B2C side, right? Like the Ola's and the Wiggies and so on, which which have seen large scale, which helps our engineers now really, uh, you know, think about uh, large engineering problems and, and build, whether it's developer tools or, uh, you know, SDKs of different kinds. We've seen like the likes of uh, clever tap mo engage folks like that on one side um, it yeah, may still be yeah. around solutions but like scale right and and uh, more recently i heard about 100 ms which is looking at uh, uh, video tech that they'd seen that scale at uh, hotstar etc uh, you know that, that that's interesting yeah i mean i think just yeah. to pull yeah. this thread together again i think all three of you have said which is that the india indian customers themselves and Indian developers themselves building for themselves is actually an opportunity that's emerging from India. Um, we've seen in, in a few of the companies we've backed where these infrastructure companies are selling into scaled Indian internet companies. And it turns out the requirements that they have for infrastructure are exactly the same requirements that customers in the US yes. and Europe yes. and other places have. So. You know, whereas at the workflow automation layer, sometimes the requirements are different from geography to geography. Yes. Um, at the yes. infra layer, they're very much more similar. So you can actually have a global sort of target market and not have to change your product going from geography to geography. And that's pretty powerful because India has got, yes. by different counts, the second or third largest developer community in the world. A lot of the big contributors to open source projects are from India. And uh, a lot of the infrastructure is run out of India, like Raghu was saying. So actually a lot of those uh, uh, network engineers and, and, and uh, sort of people who are scaling the backends are sitting here in any case, and they are the target customers. So that's actually a pretty powerful new opportunity that, that we're seeing come up. Um, Rishi, were you saying something? I think AI and uh, AI companies learning companies uh, kind of uh, are the new emerging, uh, I would say, uh, enterprise software companies coming out of India. And I think uh, one difference that I think these companies are, are kind of bringing is that I think they are starting off at the same time as a lot of their competitors in the US, uh, unlike potentially the workflow companies where uh, the companies outside, outside of India have started uh, a little behind, uh, uh, let's say, a, a support desk or a CRM kind of markets. And I feel that that's a phenomenal opportunity just because you're able to get 
more data uh, starting from here. And as uh, Sri was mentioning, you can invest a lot more of uh, engineering bandwidth uh, per dollar invested. And uh, all these can potentially help AI companies uh, uh, to be uh, to kind of win in global markets. I, I'll tie one thing that Dave just mentioned, wherein uh, infrastructure companies, where uh, if you take Postman, Hasura, Browser Stack, any activities that you do with those products in India are applicable globally. I think one lesson that came out of Freshworks is up, is pretty much is what we are seeing even in workflows. That is, when companies like Freshworks or or uh, or uh, Druva or Browser Stack, when they are operating at best in class kind of an operations the kind of workflows which would need AI or the right kind of integrations are also coming through. So the same kind of a, a, a build one uh, kind of infra and that scales for everything is kind of happening in operations also. So if you were in sales operations or sales performance in Freshworks, Zoho or or even Yellow, uh, you you pretty much solve the, uh, the uh, workflow problems or automation problems for any of the companies globally at that scale. And th the same kind of a thing from infra is carrying over to the workflows. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. Um, last uh, five, seven minutes or so, I want to shift a little bit to learnings and perhaps this part will appeal more to any founders who will be listening and also to the audience of, you know, larger corporates that are looking to partner with companies such as yours, they'll, they'll know a bit more about what you've learned in your journey about how to serve them best. So the question is more about learnings. Like what is it that is non-obvious about building from India that, um, that you think are lessons that founders should keep in mind as they build out their own companies? What's, what's, uh, yeah, what are some interesting takeaways from your journey so far? I know it's a broad question, but just asking if it, it could be about recruiting, it could be about product, it could be about sales and marketing, anything. This is a very topic for us. I, know, uh, I think that uh, I would throw in a couple of things here. And uh, of course, uh, this is such a broad topic and uh, uh, not necessarily from a data perspective, but, but just having done this now twice or thrice, I'll share this one is when it comes to especially SaaS and global SaaS, or B2B SaaS, I think the entire idea of MVP perhaps doesn't exist. Your 1.0 needs to be high quality, complete, and ready to go live and usable. So that's perhaps the standard. And especially where Sri just mentioned that India can play for various infra cost level in existing categories. In those categories, perhaps you can't do an MVP at all. You have to launch with what's there in the market. And we can do that. So that's perhaps the first thing is, is uh, SaaS, perhaps MVP, that language doesn't exist. That's number one. Uh, uh, second is uh, uh, product-led or self-serve product, uh, especially when you're exist, uh, executing that from digital journeys, outside inside sales from India. Uh, if you want to win early days, uh, then sales assisted, uh, product led or self serve may accelerate your learnings and revenue than just picking up the pages from Dropbox or Notion where let it be product led for as long as possible. Perhaps that lesson may not be applied as is in the inside in the India sales mode. So I think a combination of inside sales with the product led may be a better answer for those executing from here are the two things that I wanted to share. Thank you. And I think one of the things I'm like continually surprised by is, you know, the the focus. Like uh, we we build quality product now, and I think there is a very clear focus on design which has come in. Uh, which you know, for, for example, in, in our team, a designer was our first hire, and so we are building global quality in terms of like the product. But I think from a marketing perspective, from a brand perspective, uh, we need to still, you know, up it. Uh, and, and that's that's one of the things I think uh, we are focused on on this journey. I see a lot of others also now, newer startups sort of really focusing on creating that brand early for themselves globally. And I think for, uh, you know, other founders listening, that, that's going to have great impact. I think Freshworks uh, is 300, 400 million today, and hopefully the IPO helps the, the brand further. 
right but uh, all said and done i think if the brand had more focus from early on maybe they'll be even bigger now that that that's yeah. my sense yeah. and uh, I, i would say that that's one learning that i've had that you know uh, we don't tell our story as well uh, globally we may have the better product but we are a little more modest typically and maybe that needs to change from india uh, we need to we have when we have better product we need to make more noise about it well said well said thanks yeah uh, from from our perspective i think uh, one of the lessons uh, learned or i think things we could have uh, improved is i think the uh, uh, taking playbooks and kind of implementing it for yourself um, i think always we need to look at what's right for the company and there are multiple playbooks for let's say smb enterprise new ai markets uh and then the markets itself are kind of different from company to company um uh, what i think uh, at this stage uh, we could have done better is we could have had a hybrid uh, sales and gtm workforce model uh, earlier in our in our journey uh, where we hire local um, uh, enterprise sales reps marketing teams um uh, that can kind of uh, get your initial brand and initial traction going and you can always amplify with let's say uh, india based uh, workforce so just uh, having uh, the thought process about there are playbooks but you need to adapt those playbooks to what makes sense for your uh, industry current market etc and second is i think also building cross cultural teams from day one um uh so uh, when i think about it there are best practices from companies that have let's say built and scaled in the us market so you kind of get uh, uh, a workforce that has worked for let's say us market or europe market and kind of integrate with uh, the uh, the teams that have built in india so you kind of get the best out of both worlds from day one like what mm-hmm. she was mentioning the focus on brand the focus on marketing the focus on process versus the hustle of india so i think that combination can be better uh, leveraged i think these are the two uh, learnings uh, i would say from uh, from our journey that's a good good point there on cross culture so teams with people from multiple different nationalities or mm. geographies mm. i know I remember when infosys went public and they started and there was a lot of pressure to start hiring in the us you know it was interesting to see the, the indian culture interact with us culture at infosys i wasn't there but this is the stories i read and it was it was certainly needed managing and uh, and uh, and synthesization a little bit uh, last question for you uh, before we move on is a lot of folks in the us um, in government or at large corporates may think that india is more back office it's uh, it's more existing processes that are automated Um, that there is not much innovation that comes from india i want you to just talk a little bit about what is the innovation coming out of saas from india what is innovative that's happened in saas from india i think it's unfortunate branding that people think of it that way i would say try our products and you will see how innovative we are and that's something which i think uh, uh, famously girish had tweeted out to someone who accused uh, freshworks of of being a you know copycat back in 2012 uh, or or 2011 i think uh, when already the product had innovation right for example it was the first sort of help desk to focus on bringing your social help desk integrated with the rest of the you know ticketing uh, experiences so there is innovation uh, maybe we don't talk enough about our innovation we don't tell our story well enough as i said before try our products and you will see the most innovative experiences which which you know we 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 now have like a strong enough product muscle engineering muscle that we are able to pull off that innovation really well so yeah that that's my request to people watching that you know uh, give us a shot you will find us to be the most innovative and look at examples as well right so uh few of the categories where uh, uh products from india have like no almost no competition look at postman look at uh, browser stack all these are uh products that require great uh technology um and uh and, and i think the uh the proof of the pudding is that there aren't very any close competitors 
customers for any of these uh, uh, these companies, unlike uh, a, a lot of companies that are out there. Um, so uh, uh, I think uh, deep innovation uh, is actually coming from uh, from India. You can't think of those examples where there's almost a monopoly kind of uh, position uh, out there in the market. Um, and uh, uh, I think that's the proof. And, uh, and and I think every organization should uh, definitely have a uh, look at look at the products coming out of the. Uh, I I would say um, the the I was surprised to see the NASCOM 2020 report had 40% of B2B SaaS revenue in India has come out of enterprise, whereas typically we seen as an SMB SaaS kind of a thing, whereas if ha literally half of our revenues have come from enterprise, uh, that's, a, that's a lot of important impactful dollars that has come out of SaaS. And uh, in some ways, uh, our, most of our software that we built are serious software. These are mission critical customer support kind of software. Uh, if Facebook, when it went down, the, it shouldn't have been status.fb.com. It should have been fb.freshworks.com because you would have at least known the status of what Freshworks was, right? So when Freshworks built a, a global network, it built assuming that it works globally, whereas Facebook built it assuming a data center next to their, their location, right? So I think running a global company is what uh, truly come out. So I'm gonna point to two things. Uh, one thing when we talk about India SaaS, uh, whether we focus on US or perhaps few segments, we can't stop. But if you look at a lot of us as continues to be truly global, Europe, uh, Australia. So this is something that a lot of SaaS companies from the US have tried to learn from us in the sense, how do you operate in APAC, how do you operate in Europe? at the right cost and at the right model. So that is something that has been day one innovation. Second, I think, is largely from a culture management. Uh, uh, India, by definition, is a multi-state, multi-language, multi-tension system. So uh, how do you run a global company? And you just said that we, how do we look about hiring uh, people from different backgrounds and things like that? And I think that is where uh, Indian SaaS uh, really brings its strength from years and years of working cross-cultural within the country or globally. And that's baking into our products, that's baking into the way we make the systems work. So I think those are the two things I think they are, they're very abstract, but they are baked into the product or the way we execute things. Yeah, I'll just wrap that up by saying on innovation, there's a tremendous amount coming from India, uh, business model innovation in SaaS, where it's not just recurring revenue, subscription, there's consumption based, there's transactions, there's all sorts of things on top. There is technical innovation coming in lots of different ways at the infrastructure level, IP level, uh, AI level. Um, and I think the, the, I just want to sum it up by saying that category leaders are coming out of India. Global category leaders are coming out of India. Yes. Um, yes. And, yes. Uh, and that's just, that itself is a sign that India is innovative. Um, and you, we've mentioned a number of the companies here already on this session. Um, I'll wrap up by saying, you know, for the audience, please do look up uh, the companies that our panelists represent. Uh, Raghu's company uh, is at yellow.ai. Rishi's company is at rev.so. And Sri's company is at rocketlane.com. Uh, have I got that right, all those websites? Okay, Yeah. great. Well, that was about it. Thank you so much. Uh, that's a wrap for us. And uh, thank you for listening to the audience.